Hey guys. It's been a little while. Um, decided to make another video. Now, what we're looking at here is not mine. I uh, don't take credit for it. It's it was a, it, I found it on the um, on the KSP forums. There's a group called uh, Naval Labs, uh, Zoikstra or something like that. I don't think I could ever pronounce that name right. Anyways, I don't want to you know, do them any injustice by saying their name wrong a million times. So they know who they are, you know who they are. Uh, they're, they're a good group of guys who build uh, really interesting designs with stock parts, and really I'm, you know, fascinated by how they manage to do it. Um, I, I do a little bit of messing around trying to do things like this, but I get discouraged after a while. But um, it, it is running a little bit slow. Uh, uh, I was getting about 12 frames per second, so I had to do a few minor changes to this. Also, I had to, to, to get it into the water uh, relatively quickly multiple times to do some testing to make sure that it was going to be okay for the video. So, uh, sorry guys, I mean, I, I wanted to keep the basic shape of it. and. Uh, um, I didn't change much. All I did was I took off anything that was not absolutely necessary. Um, I put a couple of my guns on it, uh, which I'm sure you'll do um, in the future. Uh, I put a couple floats under it. I took off all the wheels. I launched it to water, and it survived. The first time I tried it, it uh, exploded. So I have it uh, running on a couple micro subs um, on the inside here and uh, tied together with a few of my strong struts and the micro sub cockpit up front for launch to water and in here we have the giant phalanx with uh, the um, I believe uh, 5,000 rounds of uh, 30 millimeter um, destruction uh, it is quite a large gun. Again, remember, uh, it's tough working with normal KSP parts. Um, this ship in real life would be much bigger, of course. We all know that. So, um, uh, due to part limitations, uh, these guys do an amazing job uh, with, with what they do. So, I wanted to show something that the community has made, uh, especially guys who are really into this stuff and who have supported the ideas for expanding the game to dimensions where... Huh, most people wouldn't uh, uh, thought a space game would or should go, but I salute those guys, and they've done a great job. So I do want to get to the topic, and that is skillful. Uh, the mod I'm making with all the weapons and the armor and the damage system, and that's all incorporated. Um, so I'm going to shut these engines off. Um, I was doing about 1.2 meters per second with those two micro sub engines, but uh, I don't like having to talk over them. So. Uh, uh, on the front here we have the the, uh, the the new model for the phalanx gun. Uh, I'm not calling it a phalanx gun anymore because it gets gives people the wrong impression. Um, phalanx was just uh, I modeled the original one. Uh, you know I got the original idea from the phalanx gun. I've always kind of liked the phalanx gun for the longest time, but uh, this one looks nothing like the phalanx gun, and it. Uh, doesn't rotate or behave much like the phalanx gun, that's why uh, I changed it. Uh, it's just going to be called a CIWS, uh, so Closing Weapon System. Um, with this, there, there's going to be a few options that'll change on here before it's released, of course, but you can change the lead amount. So if you find that it's not uh, keeping up to certain targets, you can jump to the vessel and change its, uh, change its targeting lead. Um, it is just an adjustment. It doesn't change the overall uh, aiming of it, but it does influence the aiming. Um, so I've preset it to, I believe, 3.75, and sometimes I like between there and 4.5, depending on the type of aircraft uh, I think I'm going to be intercepting. Um, it may be an automatic thing that will come later on, of course. So here we can see... Um, that it's set to auto track. If you turn the auto track off, it won't go into guardian mode. When you uh, fl when an enemy flies over, it will not shoot at it. By default, that is on. Um, if you want to auto if you want to manually target something in the distance, say you're coming up on a small boat, you can double click on the boat and you can click on fire burst. 
You'll be able to use this directly by double clicking on, uh, on any target and then just firing bursts out of it. Um, they will automatically spin to the target and basically all you have to do is just hit burst, burst, burst and it will shoot uh, uh, you know, a round at a time off. Um, it's not the, the, the most destructive way to use them. You can hook them to, to quick keys and they will fire that way in a semi-automatic mode. For full automatic you have to use the home key and that's just the limitation I have in the code right now. But um, so, so with the turret lockout you could basically lock out that turret, activate this turret and then basically auto home and hold down the home key and it would fire at full rate. Uh, so you'd get a, a wicked blast coming out of that thing and just rip things to shreds. Um, the gun on the back here is the auto air turret. Now that's designed to go on the bottom of like a large bomber or the back of a bomber or uh, or underneath a helicopter or or whatever. Um, this is a 7.62 gun. It's just a little machine gun basically with an auto uh, on a ball turret. Um, it auto aims just like the CIWS. The difference being um, the ball turret, which is uh, the auto air turret here, it will only fire burst uh, in, in random patterns, basically. So if an enemy's coming in, it will go brr, 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 and it kind of it kind of has an erratic kind of firing rate, like a human is actually firing it. Uh, this one over here is a fully automated and computerized system and it fires usually at full rate depending on the speed of the target. They, they basically evaluate the target and, and, and can ramp up the, uh, the firing rate or change the firing pattern as, as it deems necessary. Uh, for the smaller gun, of course, it has less muzzle velocity than the other gun, for, than the larger gun. So you would need to increase, if you have a fast moving target, you would need to increase the lead a little bit more on a gun like this to make it uh, effective at a certain range. Um, uh, you can see down at the bottom 7.62 millimeter ammo, 1200 rounds. Uh, at the front here we have 2500 rounds. Now other rounds can be added to the vessel but it does take somebody uh, on the vessel to actually transfer the ammo. So even on a large ship, I mean, you'd have a a, a, C, a closing weapon system would have a an internal magazine that would be in the thousands and thousands of rounds. Um, but for other other ordnance on the ship, uh, you, unless they're fully automated, um, they need to have their ammo, uh, um, the immediate ammo right in the magazine has to be swapped out by people still. So um, like in the battleship, for example, you'd have to have guys moving the ammo f from a, ma a central magazine to the, a, a, a small stash of, uh, of shells and powder in that turret. So for, the, for this case, uh, in this case here, this is a, an, just an example. Um, the problem with the with the with the using the the standard KSP parts, of course, is that this thing uh, was originally over 400 and something parts. I got it down to 300, and it, it really lags my computer. Um, so, uh, to to fight a a battle scenario with this would be extremely difficult. Uh, so what I'm hoping is with the new KSP, when that comes out, um, yet less struts will need be needed. So all these parts will stick together a heck of a lot stronger, and we wouldn't, and we'll be able to reduce the part counts at least probably by half. Uh, so so that'll be good for everybody. Um, it'll be good for my carrier parts too, because I think uh, about 50% uh, of the parts are struts. So um, in, in any case, I'll cut out now and I'll go to the uh, hangar, and that's where I'll show you some more of the interesting stuff.